a small hint in advance. For the full effect you have to wear headphones while watching this video. Hi guys, I'm Chris. How do humans locate sounds? Like, why can we say where sounds are coming from? Your answer might be, yeah, because we have two ears and that is technically true, but what are the cues our brain uses to perceive that? Today I want to talk about binaural synthesis. That's how it's called when you process sounds in a way that our brain thinks a sound comes from a certain direction. I made a grid patch in Bitwig which resembles the very basic principles how humans locate sound on the horizontal plane. Elevation perception is a different subject and more complicated to synthesize because it depends heavily on the pinna, the outer ear, um, and there are large differences in shapes between people. So it's a very individual cue. There are two main things we need to do so our brain thinks sounds are not played back in our head, but for example, besides us. One, the interaural time difference, a delay of sound between the ears, and second, uh, interaural level difference, attenuation of higher frequencies on the opposite side. Both of them you can see in this animation of the Chalmers University in Göteborg. Uh, here we have a sound source, and here we have an obstacle which shields the sound. And for our case, you can imagine this is a head. And you can see the interaural time difference. When you follow the waves with your eyes, it needs a certain time for the waves to reach the other side of the head. And the second um, thing, interaural level difference, you can see also, these are uh, shown as the amplitudes, how much the particles are moving. Uh, on the left side where the sound source is, uh, the particles are moving much stronger and on the other side um, they are shielded um, by the head and so they are moving not as much. I studied hearing technology and audiology and back then I got to know this great model for binaural synthesis by Brown and Duda. Um, which I used as a basis for this preset. I will link it down the description below so you can go into more detail if you like. In the paper you can find a figure which shows the attenuation of frequencies for certain angles, which are in fact the interaural level differences. These changes depend on the angle of incidence of the sound waves and if the sound source is exactly on the left side, it will produce again at the left ear, starting at a certain frequency. At the same time, the opposite ear will experience attenuation above a certain frequency. And these transfer functions we want to reproduce in Bitwig, so we have this angle-dependent filtering. So now let's get into it. I have a song of mine and a sampler, so I don't get any license complaints or anything. So let's play with it and see what it does. Yeah, let's uh, stop fooling around. Um, let's explain some things here. Um, up here we have a setup. You can change your head width um, and also the speed of sound. Um, down here we have some sources, like you already heard the, um, the music of mine. And, and delta impulse, like it's only one number, a click and uh, then uh, the decaying white noise, which is looping to move it around. These sources then get rooted through some delays to imitate the interaural time difference. Um, these are very, very small delays at a sample frequency of 44.1 kilohertz we only have um, 20 samples or so of delay with my size of head. After that we exit the grid patch over here and um, split the sound 
back again to left and right because we don't have shelving filters inside of the grid for now. And um, yeah, the filters you saw in the paper look very much like shelving filters, so I chose to do it this way. And uh, you can see them changing when changing the placement of the source. So to summarize, this is the time difference part and this is the level difference part for two channels. If you move it to the left side, you see the right ear is uh, attenuated and the left side gets a gain to resemble the transfer functions you saw in the paper. A quick heads up how you have to interpret this XY pad here. The X axis is controlling where the source is sitting, left side of your ear, right side of your ear. Um, but the Y axis is controlling the distance. Let me get out my paint skills here and show you what I mean. If, if we move the source from left to right on the upper edge, this is what it actually does for us. We have the same distance to the head and we move the source from left to right. If we move the source on a linear path on the XY pad, this is what it actually does to us. It comes closer at the same angle and then moves away from our head at the same angle or the same direction because we have no difference between front and back. So it's a mirrored by neural synthesis for now. I also added some switches so we can turn on or off things like the ILD, the ITD, direct sound and reverb, and also um, a knob to change or add uh, left and right channels beforehand together or not. You can even hear then if there's a stereo source in front of you or besides you or not. Um, let me show what I mean. Um, let's turn on my song. Let's make it a little more quieter. And now I added two channels together beforehand, the left and the right channel. We can move it around. And now listen what it does to the sound when we um, play two channels before we binaural synthesize them. This is mono. And now we change to stereo. You can even distinguish uh, these two settings. That's uh, kind of cool. You can really feel how it narrows down and um, how you can pinpoint it more. The other cool part is uh, we can switch off the reverb, then it sounds more like being in an acoustic chamber, if you ever have been there, um, it's it can sound quite strange um, because you have no reflections of sounds in there, and um, it feels a little bit like crawling into the ears. I would say um, if you uh, change the location to left or right, I turned reverb off and only have direct sound on. It feels numb on the um, other ear. You know what I mean? It feels a little bit strange because we always have reverb in the natural habitat. And because we can toggle ILD and ITD on and off independently from each other, we can hear what it sounds like to only have the one or the other. This is only having time differences between the ears. Not so much different, a little bit phasing. And this is only interaural level differences. It's way more obvious, uh, the ILD than the ITD. 
But here what happens um, when I switch the ITD on when the source is already on the left side, then it jumps out of your head. At least f uh, that's my impression. You heard what I mean? It instantly jumps out of your head. You could also say it externalizes better. Science has shown that the ITD is more dominant below 1.5 kHz and the ILD is more dominant above 1.5 kHz, more or less. So ITD more important for the bass, ILD more for mid and high frequencies. So that's why I thought let's cut everything above a certain frequency and see if the ILD still works. This is what I did here. We have a very, very steep low pass filter. And let's have a look what the ILD does at these frequencies. Still very, very much. I didn't expect that. That is probably because of the shelving filters. They seem to be introducing way more gain or attenuation than I thought over the whole spectrum. To prove that, I added the sine wave um, as an input and an oscilloscope on my channel. And now I place the sine wave in the middle. Step up the gain. You can see it's about 70 Hertz. And now I move the source. You see the transfer functions of the shelving filters moving and also the amplitudes in the oscilloscope. I think that's it for this video. I will put the download link in the description below so you can tweak around and play around with this patch. If you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Uh, hit me up on Instagram or any other social media platform. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this patch and um, please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new and consider subscribing. Bye for now.